Hello wonderful people, it's Metacosis Perfectionatus. Welcome back to my physics playlist. In previous videos we started talking about thermodynamics and we are discussing temperature scales. In the first video we talked about converting Celsius to Kelvin. In the second video we talked about converting Fahrenheit to Celsius. Today we're talking about conversion between Fahrenheit and Kelvin. So this is what you do. If you have the temperature in Fahrenheit, you subtract 32 from this and divide by about 1.8. By the way, you know where we got that number from? This is 9 over 5 that we talked about in the last video. And then you add to that 273.15 to get the temperature in Kelvin. Question, is temperature a scalar quantity or a vector quantity? Temperature is a scalar quantity because it has a magnitude only but no direction, which means there is no such thing as 100 Kelvin north or south. What's the definition of temperature? It is a measure of the average kinetic energy within a medium. The medium could be solid, liquid, or gas. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. Please refer to the previous videos on converting between Kelvin and Celsius, as well as Fahrenheit and Celsius. You can find all of these videos in my physics playlist. And don't forget to check out other playlists too. You will recall from the last video that if I have the temperature in Celsius and I want to convert it to Fahrenheit, you multiply that Celsius by 9 over 5, add to that 32, you get the degrees in Fahrenheit. Now, what if I do have Fahrenheit, but I want to convert it to Celsius, just rearrange the equation, keep this on one side, bring the 32 to the other side with a negative sign, which looks like this, and then multiplying each side of the equation by 5 over 9, to get rid of the 9 over 5, you get something like this. So that's the temperature in Celsius. Keep that in mind. Then we know another equation converting between Kelvin and Celsius. If you have the temperature in Celsius, add 273 to that and you get the temperature in Kelvin. This Celsius is the same as that Celsius. So we can put all of this in place of this and it's going to look like this. And this is where you get the equation to convert from Fahrenheit to Kelvin. If you multiply something by 5 over 9, it's as if you're dividing it by 9 over 5. And 9 over 5 is 1.8 or 1.79. So that's where we got the equation from. So that's our main equation. How can we rearrange this so that I can find the temperature in Fahrenheit? If I do have the temperature in Kelvin, you arrange it like this. Bring the 273 to the other side with a negative sign, which equals all of this. Multiply by 9 over 5 on both sides of the equation, you get this. And this is how you find your temperature in Fahrenheit if you do have it in Kelvin. Another way of doing it is to convert the temperature in Kelvin to temperature in Celsius and then convert that Celsius to Fahrenheit. Let's practice. Here's the first question. Please pause and try to solve this yourself. What should we do? Well, we have the temperature in Fahrenheit. We're going to convert it to Kelvin. So the temperature in Kelvin equals 5 over 9, open parenthesis, Fahrenheit degrees minus 32, close parenthesis, close the bigger parenthesis, plus 273.15. The temperature in Fahrenheit is 98, so it's 5 over 9, multiplied by 98 minus 32, close and close, plus 273.15. When you do the math, you'll find the temperature of 309 Point eight degrees Kelvin. Next, Sarah has a fever of 104 degrees Fahrenheit. What's her body temperature in Kelvin? Let's go. The temperature in Kelvin equals 5 over 9, multiplied by Fahrenheit minus 32, close parentheses, close this one again, plus 273.15. And what should I put here? 104. And then you do the math, you'll find the temperature of 313.15 Kelvin. If you want to see more physics videos in the future, drop a fever emoji in the comments. How about this one? If the absolute zero temperature is zero Kelvin, how much is that on the Fahrenheit scale? Oh, so they want the opposite. They gave me the Kelvin and they want the Fahrenheit. So how should we answer this? Well, the temperature in Fahrenheit equals not five over nine, but nine over five. Okay, multiply this by Kelvin minus 273.15, close parentheses and close, plus 32. What number should I put here? Zero. So it's negative 273.15 multiplied by 9 over 5, and then you add 32 to that. And this will give me negative 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Next, a sample of dry ice, which is solid carbon dioxide, has a temperature of 195 degrees Kelvin. This is equivalent to blank Fahrenheit. Now, how can we answer this? Well, I want it in Fahrenheit, so it's 9 over 5. Open parentheses, temperature in Kelvin, minus 273.15. Close parentheses, when you do all of this, you add 32. I know my temperature in Kelvin, which is 195. You substitute it here, and you'll find that the temperature in Fahrenheit equals negative 108.67, so the closest thing that we have is choice A. Next, and here is the beast. If the difference between two temperature measurements is x degrees on the Fahrenheit scale, then the difference between them is blank on the Kelvin scale. How can we answer this? Well, pick any two random numbers on the Fahrenheit scale. Let's say we have 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and we also have 212 degrees Fahrenheit. What is the delta between them? What's the difference? 212 minus 32 is 180 degrees. So this is the x that they are referring to, which is the difference between the two. Next, let's convert the first temperature to the Kelvin scale and the second one also to Kelvin. Using this fancy schmancy equation, Kelvin equals 5 over 9, multiply this by Fahrenheit minus 32, close parentheses, and then close, plus 273.15. When you convert the 32 degrees Fahrenheit, it becomes 273 Kelvin. When you convert 212 to Kelvin, you get 373 degrees Kelvin. What is the delta? What's the difference between them? 373 minus 273, oh, here is a delta of 100 instead of 180. So this 100 is how much of the x? Well, put the Kelvin upstairs, put the Fahrenheit downstairs, it's 100 over 180. You can cancel the 0 with the 0, it is 10 over 18, divide by 5, this is 5 over 9. This is close to half, it's not quite half, but it's close to half, it's about 0 0.56 of x, making choice C the correct answer. Because the delta in Kelvin is about half of the delta in Fahrenheit. And this is a very important point, because in a previous video we've talked about the delta in Celsius, it's always equal the delta in Kelvin. Look at these two numbers on Celsius, between 0 degrees and 100 degrees Celsius, the difference here is 100, so delta T in Celsius is 100. Look at the same delta between the two temperatures, 0 degrees Celsius is 273 Kelvin, and 100 degrees Celsius is 373, what's the delta here? also 100. So the difference in two temperatures on the Celsius scale is the exact same thing as their difference on the Kelvin scale. If you want these colorful notes, you can download them at medicosisperfectionalis.com. However, that's not true between Celsius and Fahrenheit, as we have discussed in the last video. The difference between two temperatures on the Celsius scale is about half of that of the Fahrenheit. Another way of saying the same thing, the delta in Fahrenheit is about double, or 1.8, that of the delta in Celsius. I want you to look at this real close. If delta in Celsius equals the delta in Kelvin, then we can remove delta T Celsius and replace it with delta T Kelvin, and the same equation will fit, which means the difference between two temperatures on the Fahrenheit scale is not the same as their difference on the Kelvin scale. In the example that we did together, we had 32 degrees Fahrenheit and 212, so the difference between them was 180. And we had 273 Kelvin and 373, so the difference between them was 100. These are not equal. So, delta T in Celsius equals delta T in Kelvin. But, from Fahrenheit to Kelvin, the delta is not the same. From Fahrenheit to Celsius, the delta is also not the same. And here's a question for you. If uh, object A has a temperature of this number on Celsius, and object B has a temperature of this number, Fahrenheit, what is the total temperature of A plus B on the Kelvin scale? Is it A, B, C, or D? Let me know your answer in the comments, you will find the answer key in the next video, where we shall continue talking about thermodynamics. You can download these doozy colorful notes at medicosisperfectionalis.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. I have physics notes, general chemistry notes, biochemistry notes, organic chemistry notes, biology notes, all kinds of notes. Check out the other playlists as well. 
If you found this video to be helpful, please consider supporting this channel by buying me a coffee. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. To learn about how your kidney functions, the GFR, micturition reflex, renal clearance, what happens in the proximal tubule, loop of Henle, distal tubule, collecting ducts, download my kidney physiology course at medicosisperfectionetics.com. It comes with videos, notes, and cases. There are more than 600 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine, chemistry, and physics make perfect sense.